Hello everyone and welcome to Children's Storytime. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos. Today's book is called Seven Rules You Absolutely Must Not Break If You Want to Survive the Cafeteria. It was Monday morning and I was on the school bus sitting next to Ginny. She is a class ahead of me and she talks and talks and talks. Today she was talking about her lunch. How she likes carrots but thinks celery is too stringy. How rye bread is okay but only without seeds. How chocolate milk is better than plain. And squishy bananas are gross. I was sort of listening. But mostly I was thinking about a book on insects I'd been reading. Jenny's voice reminded me of the constant chatter of crickets on a summer night. I tried to join in. Mom didn't have time to make me lunch today, so I had to buy it in the cafeteria. Ginny gasped. Ginny is very dramatic. You've never, I mean never, bought lunch in the cafeteria before? Have you, Kyle? No, I said. But how hard can it be? Well, first of all, everyone, I mean everyone, says the food is terrible, Ginny replied. Second, there are rules. My stomach did a flip-flop. Rules make me worried scared and a little bit sick, mostly because I'm afraid I'll break them. What kind of rules, I asked. You'd better write this down, Ginny said. She made me get out a notebook and a pencil. Then she told me the seven rules you absolutely must not break if you want to survive the cafeteria. We got to school and the morning went along as usual. Then at 11.25 for lunch, my class scurried down the hall like a column of starving army ants. I was last in line once we reached the cafeteria, and another class got in line right behind me. They were sixth graders, and they were as scary as a swarm of yellow jackets. I didn't turn around. It's best to ignore wasps. They sting when they're angry. The lunch line inched its way forward. Finally, I reached a stack of trays and a sign that said, Today's Menu. I stopped to check it out. There was pasta and salad, there were chicken tacos and mini carrots. There were bananas and oranges and fruit cups. Awesome! I was trying to figure out what to choose when I felt a poke in my back. A hard poke. I turned around. Oh no! It was Arthur, a bully who rode the same school bus as me. And he didn't look happy. I felt like a little snail faced with a giant meat-eating water bug. Hey, dweeb, he yelled. Get moving. I'm hungry. That's when I remembered the first thing Ginny had told me. Rule 1. Don't hold up the line. The man who was serving the food gave my school bus bully a look. What's the racket, Arthur? he said. Is there a problem? It's not his fault, I said quickly. I was taking a long time to read the menu. Well then, Arthur, just go around this young man, the server said. The entire 6th grade class went around me. At least, that disaster was avoided. I took a tray and got started. Everything looked so good. I took one of each. I was just cramming an extra carton of milk on my tray when the server said, No, 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 you can't have everything. You can only have one thing from each category. Uh-oh, I'd completely forgotten. Rule 2. Don't take too many things. Boy, I was embarrassed. I put back half the stuff. Then I shot off toward the tables. Just a minute, Sony. I think you forgot something, said a raspy voice behind me. It was the lunch lady, who always circles the cafeteria like a buzzing fly, looking for troublemakers. That's when I realized I'd broken Rule 3. Don't forget to pay. I dashed back to the register and tried to hand the cashier the $5 bill my mom had given me. You don't pay with money, the cashier said. When you get to the register, we type your PIN number. Then the cost of your lunch is charged to your account. She peered at me. You do know your PIN number, don't you? They gave it to you on the first day of school. I didn't know my PIN. But the cashier was real nice and looked it up for me. Meanwhile, the class had swarmed in. 
I was breaking rule number one, again, and they were getting restless. Behind me, the growling and grumbling got louder and louder. Here you go. Your pin number is 8242, the cashier told me. Just keep saying that over and over so you don't forget. 8242, 8242, I repeated, and she waved me on. Finally, I can go sit down and eat. I looked around the room because of Rule 4. Always eat with your classmates. There they were, way across the cafeteria. Oh no, there was only one place left. I started running so I can get to it before someone else did. That's when it happened. I tripped over my own feet. I fell flat on my belly and the tray went flying. I couldn't believe it. I had just broken rule five. Hold on to your tray. Everyone around me shrieked, which brought the lunch lady swooping over. I picked up as much of the mess as I could. Then she led me back through the lunch line to get more food. The whole time she lectured me about not running and not endangering myself and others. Buzz, buzz, buzz. By the time the lunch lady let me go, the last seat on my class's table was taken. I set down my tray and tried to squeeze in anyway, but the other kids started yelling about me pushing. The fly lady was back in an instant. That's it, you've caused enough trouble for one day, she said. I hung my head. Jenny had especially warned me to obey. Rule six, never aggravate the lunch lady. She gave me another lecture, then she said, I want you to pick up your tray and walk very, very slowly to that table over there. I couldn't believe it. I'd aggravated her three times in about 30 seconds. And now, as my punishment, she was making me break rule four. Even worse, the table she was sending me to was filled with sixth graders. With the lunch lady's bulgy eyes watching me, I had no choice but to walk very, very slowly to the kids, the big kids' table. That's when I heard, hey dweeb, come here, you can sit with me. It was Arthur the bully. He was hunched over his food with five other meat-eating water bugs. I sat down next to him. What else could I do? Thanks for covering me in line, Arthur said. If I got in trouble with that lunch, lady guy, lunch guy one more time, I'd get sent to the principal's office for sure. No problem, I said. I happened to glance at the next table and saw Jenny. She looked totally stunned. She was talking as usual. And even though I couldn't hear her, I could see her mouthing the words. Rule 7. Never, ever talk to the big kids. Okay, not all big kids are scary. My brother is a big kid, and he's a regular guy. But Arthur and his friends were terrifying. I couldn't meet their eyes, so I looked down at my pasta. The noodles reminded me of little worms. That made me think of my insect book again and some of the cool facts I'd learned. Did you know that a cockroach can live with its, without its head for nine days before it dies of starvation? I said. Also, there's a wasp that lays its eggs in a caterpillar, and when they hatch, they eat it from the inside out. And if you get a tapeworm in your intestines, it can grow up to 50 feet long. For some reason, Arthur turned kind of pale, and the rest of the guys went quiet. I didn't mind. I was busy eating. Lunch was really, really good. In fact, the pasta was great, and so was the salad. As I finished the last bite, I saw my class start heading for the door. So I left the table, threw out my trash, stacked my tray, and joined them. The rest of the day was no big deal. When I got on the school bus to go home, Jenny was waiting for me. She opened her mouth to speak, but before she could say a word, I held up my hand. Don't even ask, I said. I broke every single rule you gave me, but somehow I managed to survive. Plus, my stomach was pretty happy. So from now on, I'm going to follow. Rule 8. Never, absolutely never. Pay attention to Ginny's list of seven rules you absolutely must not break if you want to survive the cafeteria. Enjoy your lunch. The food is very good. Really? said Ginny. 
Really, I said, especially the worms. The end. Thank you for watching.